Introducing... The Daredevils of Hollywood. All right, George, we're ready for your scene. All you do is fall backward off this ladder and go through that skylight down there. Okay. You're playing a bank robber. You're trying to get away from the cops. They're chasing you across the top of these buildings. When you get to this ladder, they shoot. You fall off backwards. Now, get the idea? Well, is that all? Yeah. Well, let's take it. All right, everybody. Here we go. This is picture. Quiet, please. Quiet, everybody. Roll them. Start the action. There he goes, running like a quarterback. He's on the ladder. Okay, cue for the gun shot. He's losing his balance. There he goes. From Hollywood, the motion picture capital of the world, we bring you the thrilling true life experiences of those men behind the scenes. Those daring, unsung heroes whose breathtaking adventures on the screen have thrilled millions. Whose daily jobs bring them face to face with death. Those men who comprise the strangest fraternity on earth. The Suicide Squad. The movie stuntmen. The Daredevils of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, in presenting this copyrighted radio feature, we are again privileged to have as our guest one of the leading stuntmen of Hollywood, Cecil Kellogg. It is through his cooperation that we are able to reenact some of the highlights of his dangerous profession. The thrilling scenes you are about to hear are his own actual experiences. Cecil Kellogg is here in the studio now, and later in the program we will bring him to the microphone. But first, we invite you to witness a routine day in the life of this courageous young man. It is early morning on a day in the summer of 1933. Universal Studios have set up a complete location unit on a sandy country road near Palmdale, California. Besides the cameras, reflectors, and other movie-making equipment, one large speedy Phaeton automobile and a single-motored bombing plane are being prepared for their participation in the filming of an extremely hazardous scene. Cecil Kellogg, the stuntman who is to do that scene, sits relaxed as he goes over the final details with the director. Now, let's see, Mr. Taylor. I start the car back up the road there about a half a mile. Is that right? That's right, Cecil. You gain speed all the way down. When you get even with the cameras here, you should be wide open. And that's where the airplane starts dropping bombs on me. Yes, at least that's the way it's supposed to look. Yeah. Of course, we'll have charges of dynamite planted in the ground. The uh, powder man will set them off as you pass over. Well, how far apart will these charges be? Oh, about every 50 yards. Now, here's the idea. You're doubling the star. Yeah. You're supposed to get through two of the explosions. Yeah. But the third one blows the car off the road and smacks it into a tree. Now, that's the tree right down there. Yeah, I see. Well, what about this powder man? Is he okay? Well, frankly, Cecil, he's new on the job. Yeah. But I think everything will be all right. The dynamite is planted three feet underground. Well, of course, a lot depends on the exact moment he sets off each charge. By the way, who's flying the airplane? Oh, didn't I tell you? No. Frank Clark's flying the ship. Oh. Say, he ought to be showing up pretty soon, too. Frank Clark, well, at least that's one thing I won't have to worry about. That boy can do all of my flying. Yeah, he's plenty good, all right. Oh, here he comes now. Hello, Frank. Hello, Mr. Taylor. I hope I'm not late. Well, what do you say, Cecil? Long time no see. Hi there. How are you, hey, boy? Just about on time, Frank. We'll be ready to go any minute now. What's new, Frank? Oh, same old thing. Say, they've got quite a gag figured out here for you, haven't they? Yeah, it looks that way. You're going to be flying lo pretty low, aren't you? Yeah. I plan to dive just before each explosion. Yeah. That'll look real, you know. Sure. Well, use your own judgment. Okay. Okay, Mr. Taylor. We're all set. All right, fine. Well, boys, are you ready? Yeah, sure. Let's take it. I'll take off and circle around until you get started. Please. Right. And I'll drive down the road there and wait for the signal. Well, I'll be seeing you, Mr. Taylor. Hope you get a good shot. All right, Cecil. And take good care of yourself, boy. Right. All right, everybody. Now listen carefully. Remember to stand clear. Watch for cameras and don't get excited. When you see the car coming, get well back under the wheel. A score of anxious faces turn toward the director as he speaks. Every eye reflects the seriousness of what he has to say. These cameramen, technicians, and others, all veterans of many dangerous scenes, have heard these instructions before. Nevertheless, they stand almost breathless, straining to catch every word. At one side of the road, standing before his electrical switches, is the powder man. His face is white and drawn. His heart beats rapidly. The responsibility of a man's life is his. Well, but all I can say is, everybody on your toes. Okay, Mr. Taylor, the airplane's up and everything else is ready. All right. 
Here we go. This is it. Quiet, everybody. Quiet, please. All right, give him the signal. There he comes, right over the hill. Camera. See, he's not wasting any time. And here comes the airplane. Look at that dive. All right, let her go. Good grief, that one blew his head off. Swung the car around, too, but he's still going. Here's another dive. This is terrific. It's even better than that. Say, he's making at least 75. The ship's turning back for another dive. Here he comes. Look, that car jumped into the air like a frog. But he landed, okay? He's headed for the tree. Now get this, boys. Get it. Watch out. There he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to present the fearless young man who made that scene, whose job it is to make dangerous and thrilling scenes for motion pictures. One of Hollywood's ace stuntmen, Cecil Kellogg, interviewed by Glenn Hardy. Well, Cecil, I'll have to admit that that stunt was certainly a thriller. Tell me, were you hurt at all? No, I wasn't, but I was plenty stiff and sore for several days afterwards. Yes. The jar when I hit that tree was terrific. I'll bet it was. Say, were you strapped in the car? No, not that time. I always strap myself in if the car's to turn over, but on just a crash, well, I'd rather be loose. Look, Cecil, have you ever been injured doing any of these dangerous stunts for the movies? No, not seriously. Well, how do you account for that? Well, it's partly luck and partly knowing what to do at the right time. (laughs) Well, I can understand that, all right. You see, there are thousands of ways you can get hurt doing a stunt, but maybe two or three ways not to get hurt. A stunt man must figure out those two or three ways and take one of them. By the way, Cecil, I understand your wife is doing stunt work, too. What about that? Yeah, that's right. She's Frances Kellogg. Her specialty is horse stunt. I think she's the only woman in the business who can drive a span of six horses. In stunts, I mean. Well, that's very interesting. But tell me, Cecil, what stars have you doubled for? Oh, many of them. Let's see. There's Douglas Fairbanks, Buster Crabbe, Gene Whitman, Tom Mick, Buck Jones... Well, a lot of them. I see. And have you also doubled for women? Mm, sure. Mary Pickford, the late Ruth Rowland, Norma Talmadge, Norma Shearer, Claudette Colbert. Well, I can't think of all of them offhand. <laughs> well, Cecil, I should imagine this stunt business is plenty exciting. Yes, it is. But there's quite a fascination to it. You see, there are no two stunts exactly alike. For instance, uh, take the time I did a gag up into Hunger Ken. Pardon me, Cecil. We want to hear about that. In fact, we wouldn't let you get out of here without telling us. But first, let's have just a word from our sponsor. All right now, Cecil, what about that stunt up in the canyon? Well, it was back in 1927. As I say, we were up in Hunger Canyon. That's about 20 miles from Hollywood. William Kraft, the director, was explaining to me what I was supposed to do. Now, look, Cecil, you're dressed as the leading lady in this scene, and you're on a runaway horse. And I see. A bob will be doubling the leading man. He'll be right behind you. The idea is the old rescue gag. Get the point? Yeah. Well, what happens then? Well, it develops that you fall off the horse before Bob can catch up with you. Then you just roll over on that ledge there and hang on till he comes and gets you. You mean hang by my fingers over that canyon? Why, man, that thing's 200 feet deep and straight down. Uh, Yes, I know, Cecil, but uh, we've got a piano wire net stretched across there about 10 feet below. So if you can't hang on, the wire will catch you. Yeah, maybe. That piano wire holds sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. Besides, that'll be a terrific jerk, a ten-foot fall. Well, there's a good solid rock ledge down there for you to hang on to. I think everything will be all right. Well, I guess we'll soon know whether it will or not. I see they got the camera set up. Yes, we're ready to shoot. Now, look, when Bob comes to get you, he'll lasso you and pull you off the bank. Is that all clear? Yep. Well, let's take it. Okay, boy. Get on your horse and get down the road a ways. Oh, Bob's waiting for you down there. I'll give you the signal to start. Right. Obviously. All right, everybody. We're all set. This is the picture. Quiet, please. Everybody take your places. Quiet, please. All right, men, pan them all the way down. Ready now? Okay, give the signal. Roll them. Here they come. And are those horses running? You bet they're running. This is going to be good. Oh, boy, look at Cecil make that call up the horse. It was perfect. He's rolling down to the ledge. Say, this is swell. Here comes Bob. He's getting ready to let to him. Great, Scott. Cecil's hands are slipping off the rock. He can't hold on. Hurry, Bob. 
throw that rope over him, quick. Oh, look at that. He lassoed that boy in midair. So you really did slip off that rock after all, eh, Cecil? That's right. My finger slipped off and I had to let go. And the other fellow lassoed you before you fell. Is that it? That's it. Of course, the piano wire net might have held me, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I was sure glad to feel that rope around my waist. I'll bet you were that, Cecil. Now, look, how did you happen to get into this movie stunt business in the first place? Well, I started out doubling for Mary Pickford and Little Lord Fauntleroy, working with horses. I did a few easy stunts at first, but one thing led to another until I was doing all kinds of gags. I see, but tell me this, Cecil. Do you like the stunt business? In some ways I do, others I don't. Very fascinating, but on the other hand, it's unquestionably a very dangerous profession. Well, I think I understand your point of view, and all of this has been very interesting. You've given us an exciting and entertaining time, and on behalf of our listeners, I want to thank you sincerely for coming here. I know that everyone joins me in hoping that we may have you on this program again very soon. Take care of yourself, old boy, and happy landings. <laughs> 